Hey guys, this is Justin, and today I'm going to be doing an interview with Lauren Landa, who you might have heard her voice in Dead or Alive 5's Katsumi. Uh, she's also the voice of Kyoko in Madoka Magica, Boy Boy in Redline, and she happens to be the voice of Annie in Attack on Titan. Hey, Hello. Lauren. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Justin. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, how? Uh, I guess we'll just get started about with that. Um, how uh, how long have you been how long have you known you t- you was going to do the role of of Annie? Uh well how long did I know or how I mean I I'm, I'm not really sure if I'm supposed to say how long I knew. Well, okay, fine. Okay, fine. We'll, 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 <laughs> all right, we'll, but, um, all right. All right. Um but as for getting the role of Annie, it was uh, it was pretty exciting because I had not seen the show. I had not seen the show before I was cast, and when I was cast, I decided, well, I can either go ahead and watch the whole thing, or I can be surprised and, you know, while I watch the show. And by the way, some of your listeners may not have seen the show, so let's avoid spoilers. (laughs) Yeah, I know, I know. But but either way, uh, I decided to watch the show. Not only because I was cast in it, but because uh, I have heard, or I had heard nothing but fantastic things about it, and everybody was talking about it. So eventually I did see it, and I was hooked off of the first episode. It was awesome. It's an awesome, fantastic show. It's like Walking Dead meets Game of Thrones, in my opinion. That's what I've heard. Yeah, and Game of Thrones is one of my favorite shows, so that automatically works for me. But, um, yeah, Annie is, she's a badass character. Um, Not only is she tough, but she has a very, um, (laughs) I don't know how to describe Annie, because she's very, she's very serious. She's a very serious, lovely lady that obviously has a past, but we don't know what that past is, and... Like I said, she's a total badass. <laughs> <laughs> um, so okay. Um, uh, did you? I, I guess as you say, you just started watching. You started hearing about it. Um, were you were you surprised? Or you were surprised that you had liked that you um enjoyed the show so much and that oh wow this is a really wow this show is is really popular and stuff like that like wow. Well, when I first saw it, I really didn't know what to expect. I just I just assumed it was another anime show that a lot of anime fans liked, you know, one of the bigger shows like a uh, Full Metal Alchemist or Naruto or Bleach. I just assumed it was just like that. So when I saw it, I was surprised because it really is not, in my opinion, it is not like any other anime that I've seen. And honestly, at times, I forgot that I was watching an anime. Um, and really, that's what it comes down to is that Anime is just animated. It doesn't necessarily have to be a genre of its own, um, but, you know, to me it's just like, it's the same as liking any other show like Game of Thrones or True Blood or How I Met Your Mother or any of those shows, you know, it's, it just happens to be animated, and so for fans who enjoy anime already, of course, it was a given, but for people who don't usually watch anime, I actually told them, and I do to this day, I tell them, I promise you, if you do not like anime, you're going to forget that this is an anime, because it's it's that, I'm not sure what the term to use would be, but um, it's just, it's not your typical, it's not your typical anime show, and most people that have seen it... <clears throat> have really loved and enjoyed it. So, yeah, I mean, I was a bit surprised because I don't get to, I don't watch anime that much anymore because I work so much with it. Um, But when I do choose to sit down and actually watch what I'm working on or a show that people keep telling me to watch, most of the time I do like and enjoy it. And, yeah, Titan, Titan is one of those shows that not only am I so excited to be a part of it, but I'm so excited to be a part of a show that is just, awesome that is just fantastic i still get excited to this day about it it's all right um so i just want to ask you how did uh, voice acting become an opportunity for you did you have any idea you would become a voice actor when you was growing up um when i was growing up i just knew that i wanted to act 
Like, I knew I wanted to be an actress. I wanted to be in films and television. And, you know, when I was little, voice acting never occurred to me because we don't, when we're little, we don't think that much about it. <laughs> at, least, at least I didn't. All we know is, is that there are voices coming out of these cartoons. And that's a fun idea. But I never actually thought of um, pursuing that until I got to college. And uh, when I got to college, a friend of mine, Peggy O'Neill, said, hey, you know, you should you should look into this if you have an interest in it. Because by that time, I had pretty much done stage productions throughout my entire life. So acting was no strange land to me. Um, but uh, when I um, spoke to her about that, I then met Tony Oliver who, after taking one of his workshops, because, again, I knew nothing about workshops at the time. I knew nothing about that. Uh, but when I took his workshop, he pulled me aside and said, yeah, you definitely need to get into this. And then a few months later, I was cast in Magical Girl Lyrical Nanaha, which was my first anime show. And in that, I played Arf and Chrono Harlown. Arf was Fate's little familiar, who was kind of a demon dog kind of familiar. And then Chrono Harlown was the little boy that comes in later in the season, and he's kind of an army brat. So, but that was my first anime. Um, were you like, uh, I guess you were, you were big into video games and anime when you was growing up, correct? Uh, sort of. <laughs> uh, I saw, I had watched a few anime, and... Yeah, I played some video games. Um, I really enjoyed Zelda. I enjoyed the Grand Theft Auto games. I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed some fighting games. I, I didn't get too much into fighting games because I was always terrible at them. But uh, I remember playing Bloody Roar. I don't remember which one. But I remember playing Bloody Roar. Uh, Grand Theft Auto 3 was definitely one of my favorites. Um... And then I also remember Ocarina of Time definitely definitely being my favorite Zelda game. And I'd like to add, because I totally like to brag about this, I can beat the Forest Temple in less than an hour. Thank you very much. <laughs> Some of the Zelda fans out there are like, girl, that is nothing. <laughs> so, but I'm proud. <laughs> um, so what, uh, what has surprised you about the anime industry from, like, interacting with other voice actors, uh, speaking with companies, interacting with the fandom, stuff like that? Well, to me, interacting with other actors is just interacting with other people that you share the same passions with. Um, and technically, or not technically, typically, I am sorry, I speak English for a living. <laughs> typically, um, when I do meet other actors, we, have, we always have something in common. So it could either be that we both enjoy acting for a living or we both enjoy a certain show or a certain activity. Um, and usually we just bond over that. But really the people in this industry are by far fantastic people and some of them are my dearest, closest friends whom I love dearly and honestly I can't imagine the industry without any of them. Um, and not only that, but it's... For the most part, it's a supportive community. When someone doesn't get a role, when the other person does get a role, the other person will shake that person's hand or say, oh, congrats, congratulations on this. Um, you know, honestly, a lot of people have come up to me in the industry and congratulated me on the Titan role, and I'm incredibly uh, grateful for that because they don't necessarily need to do that, but, you know, it's it's kind of them to do so and it's supportive and I think that's fantastic and that's what I love most about this community um, as for fandom I love going to cons and meeting fans it's uh, it's fun because they really do love the projects that you've been a part of uh, to this day I still meet people that have not seen Redline and when I open them up to it when I say oh no you have to see this movie they go to the dealer's hall, and if the dealer's hall actually does have Redline, they will buy it, and then the next morning they will come up to me at an autograph signing or at a panel, and they will say, oh, my God, I just saw Redline. It's amazing. And I love that. I love moments like that where I, you know, if we self-promote our shows, then that's one thing, but 
I think if we actually do enjoy the projects that we've been on, that says a lot. And people have often enjoyed the shows that I've told them about, even if they're not mine. So, you know, but it's it's fun meeting fans. And a lot of the fans are incredibly supportive. There is a dark area when it comes to fandom. And that's, you know, either the dub haters or the sub haters, whatever. To each his own, whatever their preference is. But, you know, for the most part, most of the fans that I have met have always been incredibly supportive and very nice and very friendly and just a lot of fun to hang around with at cons. Um, can you share a video game or anime related, it doesn't matter, um, your general schedule when you have to do a recording? Well, it depends on the role. It depends on how much time you have. Um, let's see... Uh, for Redline, for example, because that's only about a 90-minute film, and because my part, Boy Boy, is relatively small, I think that was knocked out in one session, probably in about two hours, two and a half hours, something like that. Um, video games can be a bit more difficult, because especially if it's a fighting game or an RPG, you will be doing fighting, you will be screaming, you will be doing... Um, damage noises, anything like that, that can usually take up to maybe about four hours um, for one session, and then the next session can be two. It really depends on the character, and really depends on how many lines that character has, or how much dialogue that character has. So really, there's no definite answer. It varies all the time. Okay. Um, is there a specific uh, specific um, way you prepare for, to voice a character? For like, uh, I guess, for example, for anime, do you check out the material in Japanese, or uh, or for a video game, you study the background of that character you're playing? Unless we are given the material beforehand, uh, we really don't, really not able to. Uh, again, I was really lucky with Titan because the whole thing was on Netflix um, legally. <laughs> um, the whole thing was on Netflix, so I was able to check that out and to see the story and what happens with each of the characters and what Annie was like, her personality. Um, but most of the time, unless the studio or client gives you some sort of uh, preparation, you really don't have that opportunity unless they give it to you beforehand. So I have very rarely gotten anything in advance. Uh, I did get some info on Lai Chi Fei Ling from Blaze Blue in preparation in, in advance. I did that. Uh, but that was the last time that I can honestly remember. Other than that, you really don't find out anything until you go into the audition or until you're sent an audition or until you are cast as a character and then you go into the session for the first time. So most of the time, you don't really find out in advance unless it's an audition of some sort. Um uh, anime has been, always been a subject of criticism, um, particularly when it comes to fan service and then how it treats uh, its women. Uh, mm. When you work when you work on roles for anime, does that affect whether you choose a role or not, or you have, or do you believe you, have, you haven't had to worry about that? Uh, for me personally, I've never had to worry about that. Um, I'm never, I've never been offended by fan service. Um, I've never been offended when a woman has a huge chest. I've never been offended when she may have other uh, bigger bodily functions, bodily mem you know, issues, whatever. I've never, I've never really paid attention to it, honestly. If I get cast for a role, that means that I'm good for it or that I'm, I'm good for the part. And that's really all that I think about. Um, I've never really gotten offended by anything. And, uh, I mean, I speak for myself, of course. I can't speak for the other actresses in the community. But I myself do not ever, I've never gotten offended. And in fact, I've actually felt very fortunate because all of the female characters that I've played have all been incredibly strong and beautiful and sexy, actually, and that, I can't, I don't find anything bad in that at all. I don't see any negativity in that, so I honestly can't be offended by that, but um, as far as fan service goes, uh, I was in a show called Iki Tosin. And I played Shubo Sunken in that, and she is very innocent. She's a very innocent character, so she didn't really have a lot of nudity scenes or any 
fan service scenes, but she was a part of fan service scenes. Again, that really just did not affect me in any way. But, you know, to some other actresses it may. I just like to be considered as being open-minded and not only that, but it just it really doesn't affect me in any personal way. Okay, okay. Um, now I'm pretty sure you've heard from plenty of people of, hey, how, I want to get into the voice acting industry. What should I do? So I'm just going to say this. If there's one thing, just one thing a person can or should do, to get into the industry as a voice actor, what would it be? Well, first off, I would say don't limit yourself to just being a voice actor. That's the first thing I would say. Don't limit yourself and say, I want to be a voice actor for anime, or I want to be a voice actor for video games, because, yes, you can limit yourself. I'm not sure how far you'll go. Um, I would recommend the first thing that you do is take a theater class. Start training yourself in theater. Start training yourself in improv. Uh, take voiceover workshops because voice acting is a part of acting. And that's something that people seem to forget. And some people actually do think that voice acting is simply just talking into a mic. It's not a science, but at the same time, it's not, it's not 100% easy. Um, but that would be my first tip would be to not limit yourself to, honestly, theater helps train so many actors for so many different things, and honestly, it helps you grow out of your little bubble, it helps you kind of come out of your shell a bit, and theater really was the best thing that I could have done for myself as an actress, because it really just trains you for everything. So again, take theater classes, improv classes, join your local community theater, um, either as a crew member or audition for it. If you don't get cast in the show, see what you can do to help as a crew member, because believe it or not, as a crew member, you can still learn just as much. And then you can move on up from being a crew member to going in front of the curtain or move on up behind the curtain. It doesn't matter. It's still experience, and experience is what helps the most. Okay. Um... I'll leave, okay, I'll leave uh, with this uh, final question. Um, what are your plans for, uh, I, I guess we could say the rest, the rest of the year, from like if you have any, uh, any upcoming anime roles or anime or video game roles, so any conventions you're heading out to, stuff like that. Well, um, as for new roles, unfortunately I can't talk about any of them yet, uh, but there is a video game role coming up. I'm not sure when. I, I want to say June or July. I'm honestly not sure. But uh, there is a video game role that I'm very excited to announce because I had a blast with this character. But honestly, right now, I'm still enjoying the fact that I just announced Annie. I'm still on that high, so to speak. So <laughs> I'm still really feeling that, and I'm very excited about that. But as for anime cons, actually, this weekend, which is, uh, let's see, the 28th, to the 31st, I will be at OmniCon, which is in Cookville, Tennessee. It's a very small con, but I would really love to send love to it because it's it's run by very nice people, and it's such a small con that deserves so much more love than it's actually getting. So if you're in Nashville or Cookville or Knoxville, I don't know how far Knoxville is from Cookville, but if you are in the area, come on by, say hi, we're going to have fun. Um, and then there will also be, uh, and I'm so sorry if I butcher the name, Sabaton Con or Sabaton Con. I apologize. I don't know how to pronounce it. Sabaton Con, which is in, um, as I'm pulling out my calendar because cause I don't know this off the top of my head, I believe that is in, let's see, um, that would be in, I'm not sure, you can look it up. <laughs> I can't, I, for some reason it's not in my calendar, but there's that, and then there is also um, Godaiko Con, which will be in either, I believe that's August, yes, that's the first weekend of August, and uh, I believe, if it's not announced yet, it will be, so I apologize, but I will also be a guest at Animazement. So there's a lot. There's a lot of cons coming up. Anime Expo, you can probably definitely, I can probably definitely guarantee that I will be there. I am there every year. So I'm hoping that we will have some Titan action going on there. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot for your time, Lauren. Thanks, Justin. 
And all right, guys, that's about it for today. Uh, see you guys next time. Thanks, guys.